Hey, I am Mintri and today we will take a look at hyperinflation. Now, if you want to familiarize yourself with the term inflation, you can watch my video on inflation linked in the cards and the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more such videos every Thursday. So, without any further ado, let's begin. So first, we must ask ourselves a basic question. What is hyperinflation? As the word tells us, hyperinflation is a term used to describe out of control general price increase or simply out of control inflation. Normal inflation can be distinguished from hyperinflation by the fact that hyperinflation is an inflation rate of 50% every month. That translates to an inflation rate of 600% per year. For a bit of context, India had an inflation rate of 5% in 2018. So we see that hyperinflation is a very extreme case of inflation. Two countries that have experienced hyperinflation only recently are Venezuela and Zimbabwe. So let's see their cases and try to learn from them. First, let's see why hyperinflation occurred in these countries in the first place. In the case of Venezuela, it was mostly because the government printed too many notes, which caused the value of the currency to plummet or decrease. The high number of notes leads to an imbalance in the demand and supply chain of the economy. Venezuela was already in the midst of an economic crisis due to the 2008 global financial crisis, of which it was the worst affected country. Also, there was political unrest in there from quite a long time due to the mismanagement of money in the country because of which people struggled for basic necessities. In 2019, Venezuela witnessed an inflation rate of 1.7 million percent. It has not recovered as of now and the inflation rates are expected to increase in the coming years. So, political unrest, economic instability and the government printing excess notes were the main reasons for inflation in Venezuela. In the case of Zimbabwe, it was actually experiencing healthy economic growth from the 1980s after their independence from the British. It was from 1991, from the advent of the new ZANU-PF government in Zimbabwe, that the economic slowdown began. The president, Robert Mugabe, introduced the Economic Structural Adjustment Program, or ESAP, which had serious negative effects on its economy. The white landowners were evicted and the land was given to black farmers, some of whom had little to no knowledge about farming. This resulted in a sharp drop in agricultural productivity. Also, such policies caused economic crises as well. Also, the government printed excess notes to cope up with the high rates of inflation, which was a bad decision to make. At one point in 2009, the inflation rate reached 89.66 trillion percent, which is equivalent to the number you see on screen. The Zimbabwean dollar essentially became worthless. Notes of 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars were printed, which were equal to a whopping 40 cents. Fortunately, the situation is not as bad today. This was due to the switch to US dollars in 2009 and the advent of EcoCash, which is a whole success story on its own. A perfect example of entrepreneurial talent. Also, the president was removed from power by 2017. So, we understand that hyperinflation is mainly caused due to economic instability, political unrest and printing notes in excess. To prevent hyperinflation, the government must not print excess bank notes, big surprise, even during economic slowdown, so that it only results in a recession rather than the ugly consequences of hyperinflation, making living extremely difficult from the citizens of the country. And good economic policies along with a stable government can prevent this from happening as well. So I hope that you liked this video. If you did, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you are updated every time I launch a new video like this. Thanks for watching.